Welcome to the fourth and last part of our lecture. Now we want to prepare you for our little task, writing a mini essay of about 500 or 600 words. Within this mini essay, you should explain how urban and participatory planning works in one of the cities from your international partners. In alphabetic order, Berlin, Cluj-Napoca, Rome, Sofia or Zagreb. During the first three lectures, I took many examples from Berlin, because it's my hometown. If you choose Berlin, please check the special task at the end of this presentation. Following, I will provide basic information about the cities and an example of planning activities or its anticipation in each case. After the presentation, start research, sampling, brainstorming and writing and don't hesitate to search for other, further or more information. Cluj-Napoca is the second most populous city in Romania, after the national capital Bucharest, and is the seat of Cluj County in the northwestern part of the country. Geographically, it's roughly equidistant from Bucharest and Belgrade, located in the somersul mig River Valley. The city is considered the unofficial capital of the historical province of Transylvania. From 1790 to 1848 and from 1861 to 1867 it was the official capital of the Grand Principality of Transylvania. As of 2011, almost 325,000 inhabitants live within the city limits. The metropolitan area has a population of more than 411,000 people. The boundaries of the municipality contain an area of approximately 180 square kilometers. Today, the city is one of the most important academic, cultural, industrial and business centers in Romania. In 2015, Cluj-Napoca was European youth capital. Here we've got a new integrated strategic plan for the Cluj-Napoca metropolitan area from Romanian planning company Urba Sofia. Their plan represents firstly a change of paradigm under the conceptual umbrella problems first. They say that they do not start neither from foreign concepts and thinking patterns that are against local level thinking or the financing opportunities that can orient the vision of local politics towards the development of unneeded projects. On the contrary, they claim that they have pursued the development of a strategic plan that looks beyond the bureaucratic and technical substantiation of the use of grant funds capable of attracting and creating opportunities for private investments through an inclusive and perspective process. What to say about Rome, the eternal city? According to legend, Rome was founded by Romulus and Remus in the year of 753 BC. The whole history of this fascinating city will blow the framework here. So modern Rome has about 2.9 million inhabitants live within the city limits. The metropolitan area has a population of about 4.3 million people. Rome has the status of a global city. Rome ranked in 2014 as the 14th most visited city in the world, third most visited in the European Union and the most popular tourist attraction in Italy. Its historic center is listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. Monuments and museums such as the Vatican Museums and the Colosseum are among the world's most visited tourist destinations, with both locations receiving millions of tourists a year.
the city of Rome adopted a new general town plan scheme, GTP, which substituted the previous one, in force since 1962. The former plan, based on a traditional zoning approach, suffered several variations over the years. One of the most important targets of the new GTP is limiting land take through promoting a better use of already urbanized areas following a mixed-use approach. The case study describes the tools provided by the new GTP to reach that goal, in particular the incentives aimed at boosting developments run by several landowners jointly within a project scheme framework planned together with public authorities. The case study puts in evidence the problems that, coupled with the economic downturn, have slowed a full exploitation of the opportunities provided. The Bulgarian capital has got about 1.26 million inhabitants, 1.5 million in its functional urban area. The city has an area of 492 square kilometers, while Sofia city province has an area of 1,344 square kilometers. Sofia has been a place for human settlement for more than 7,000 years. Later it became not only an important Roman settlement. For the longest time the city possessed a Thracian name, derived from the tribe Serdi. This tribe and the name of Emperor Marcus Ulpius Trajanus, who lived from 53 to 117 AD, prompted the Romans to give the city the cognitive name of Ulpia Serdica. Sophia's history would also blow our framework. The Ottoman Empire, World War I and II, Communism and the fall of the Iron Curtain. Today, Sofia is a modern European city which also has to deal with common urban problems. The most significant may be the air pollution, because the city is surrounded by mountains. Here an example of the perception of contemporary Bulgarian urban planning. We see a plan for a concept for the famous Sveta Nedelia Square in the center of Sofia. Maybe the comments are a bit harsh, but please judge that for yourself. I can even see my street badly drawn on the so-called plan. Almost as bad as the metro station designs from the unknown authors and Vitoshka Street, again by unknown architects. Mr. Dickoff shows again his good taste in architecture, causing more trouble than good. Another key point, infrastructural change without justification and 45,000 BGM spent for rubbish design in order to make Sofia look a little bit more provincial. Yay! Haters gonna hate. Definitely. Zagreb is the capital and the largest city of the Republic of Croatia. It is located in the northwest of the country along the Sava River at the southern slopes of the Medvednica mountain. Zagreb is a city with a rich history dating from the Roman times to the present day. In the last official census of 2011, the population of the city of Zagreb was almost 800,000. The wider Zagreb metropolitan area includes the city of Zagreb and the separate Zagreb county, bringing the total metropolitan area population up to more than 1.2 million. It is administratively subdivided into 17 city districts, most of them being at low elevation along the river Sava Valley, whereas northern and northeastern city districts such as, please excuse my pronunciation, Potsieme and Sesvete districts are situated in the foothills of the Medvednica mountain, 
making the city's geographical image rather diverse. The next planning example is an academic work by Angelina Svircic, Gotovac and Jelena Slata. Their paper deals with the problems concerning planning activities in Zagreb. So they mention that in the post-socialist and transition period, Croatia and especially its capital city Zagreb have experienced many physical transformations of space, but most of all remarkable social changes. For example, socially oriented housing construction planned and co-financed by towns in Croatia is in a very unfavorable position compared to private housing construction, especially on the outskirts of towns. In recent years, there has been a lot of building in the city core and on the outskirts of Zagreb, which is not well integrated into the existing urban structure, image or skyline of the city. The current situation in the planning process is characterized by conflict and lack of balance between powerful political and economic actors and less powerful professional and civil actors. Last but not least, the German capital, Berlin. With a population of more than 3.5 million, it is the largest of our five contestants. Its history will also blow the lecture's framework. Berlin was founded in 1237 and became an important European capital after the rise of the Prussian state in the 18th century. At the end of the 19th century, Berlin was the biggest industrial city in Europe and after 1920, the third largest municipality in the world. During World War II, big parts of Berlin had been destroyed by air raids. Today, Berlin is a world city of culture, politics, media and science. Its economy is based on high-tech firms and the service sector, encompassing a diverse range of creative industries, research facilities, media corporations and convention venues. After the war, the city was divided. East Berlin became the capital of East Germany, while West Berlin became a de facto West German exclave, surrounded by the Berlin Wall and East German territory. Following German reunification in 1990, Berlin once again became the capital of a unified Germany. As already mentioned, the first three lectures included many informations about urban planning mechanisms within the city of Berlin. If you are going to choose Berlin for your mini-essay, there's a special task for you to do. Start a research about the differences in urban planning at the time of the Cold War. What happened east or west of the Berlin Wall? Try to compare the influence of the political systems on urban planning. So, communism versus capitalism. What have been their different goals? Now it's up to you to show us other examples of urban and or participatory planning in one of our cities. Time to research, sample, brainstorming and writing. Approximately 500, 600 words. Please don't take more than three hours time. Let's start and good luck. Thank you for attending my presentations. Bye bye.